And the next method that we want to create will be the one for the where clause. So let's say public function where. And this is going to take some arguments, so a column. Okay, so when you are writing a query, you want to say, and you want to specify a condition, what do you do is say where username is equal to something. Okay, so that will be where username. Username now will be our column or feed. Okay, and then we also need to specify the operator. So let's say operator. Okay, so this will be equal, it might be equal, it might be less than, greater than, so it will be one of the one of the operators that we have specified here. And by default, we're just going to set this to be equal to. So let's set this to be equal to. So uh, let's get it from operator and we get the one in the zero position, okay? So we have a default operator, which is the equal sign, okay? So equal to, and then we can have a value and set this to be equal to no. Okay, so look at what, what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to provide the possibility to use this method easily and in different ways. If we come back to our test case, and then see where I'm using the where clause. So right here, you see I'm using where ID one, which is the column and the value, okay? But here I'm saying where report type equal to this value, okay? So here I'm passing in three arguments and then here I'm passing in two arguments, okay? So because of the flexibility of that method, we can be able to do this. If we want to use the equal sign, no need for us to specify this because we already have it as the default value there, okay? But if we want to use a different operator, then we can actually specify this. So let's come back here and then do a basic check here, okay? So we're going to first of all check if the operator is a valid operator, okay? So if it's not a valid operator, then we are going to assume that whatever is there is equal to the value. Okay, so let's say safe operators. So if if what I have here, like in the case of the test one, okay, so we have one in the case of the test. If I have one here, is one a valid operator? And the answer is no. Since one is not a valid operator, that means that it should be a value. Let's continue to do one more check. Okay, so we, we just to be on a safe side, we also want to be sure that value is actually equal to no. Okay, so value is equal to no. If that's the case, then we want to set the value to be equal to the operator. And then we want to set the operator to be equal to equal sign, which will be the default one. But if that is not the case, it means that it's really an invalid operator that was passed in. So we can throw an exception here, throw new not found exception operator is not valid and then we could pass in an array which would contain the operator so operator otherwise we're just going to continue and do something else so for now let's just return true okay or we could return everything here the way that we really want to use it so we're going to now return. So let's say we have here the column and then the value. Okay, because we need this to do our bindings. Okay, and then value. And then we also need to return the operator. So I'm going to just do this as a temporary way to show what we want to return. Okay, so 
basically we're not going to return this we want to pass this through to a different method okay and what that method would do is just to pass the bindings okay because if we have multiple where clause we need a way to join all of the values together so that method will be responsible for preparing the placeholders and also the bindings for us all right we're just going to quickly do that let's just do that one time and then we can move on to something else okay so from this method i want to return this this will enable us to do method chaining okay if we don't return this then we cannot do method chaining but then here i'm going to say this pass where's Okay, so this is going to be a function that we've not, a method that we've not created. And this method is going to actually take two arguments, an array and then the operator as the last argument. So now we can move on to actually create this method. So let's come here and say public function pass where. It takes an array of key value pairs this is going to be the conditions and then it takes a string which is going to be the operator okay we need to have a comma here then move this in okay so what we're doing going to do here it's very simple we want to take those the the conditions okay which will be the column and the value and then we're going to split them into different part okay so the part that we split them into will be one part will be the placeholders which will be as i illustrated previously name equals comma sorry name equals a question mark and then the bindings will just be the values that we want to pass through to the execute method. If you've used PDO before, you know that when we call the execute method, we want to pass it an array which matches all of the bindings that we have in the query. So we're going to do a loop. So we're going to say for each conditions as a condition. Okay, but we could even make this more explicit. Okay, so we could say as column and then we can also now do this and then say value. Okay, which is exactly the same thing that we pass in on line 50, column, value. So we're retrieving that and then within the for loop, we're now just going to update the place order so we can say this place orders okay because this is an array we're going to push value into it so this will be equal to here we can now say sprint f and then we can say percent s a space percent s and then percent s then we can pass in the three values. Okay, the first one will be the column operator and then the placeholder. So we say column and then operator and then placeholder, which we already put in a constant. So that will be a question mark. Okay. So what we will have here now will be something like this name equals question mark okay so that's what we are building here on line 57 and then right here we want to do something similar for the bindings so we're going to say this bindings because this is an array we want to push in the value so remember something here that we are inside of a for loop okay so for each iteration of the loop we have the column and then we have the value okay right here what we are doing is we take the column part we put it in place orders okay and then we take the value part we put it in bindings so we separate the column from the value so that we can use prepared statement and then we can execute and allow pdo to uh, pdo or mysqli to automatically uh, make use of the bindings to populate the data that will be passed into the query
okay and then we can then say return this all right so what we're going to do now is just do a little bit of uh, testing to see what we've written so far how this will really translate to be something okay we've not written any query yet but we we can actually test the bindings themselves so to do that we need to have uh, make this class remove the abstracts for now later we'll return it back and then in our test let's come here and we want to get a connection okay so we're going to refactor this later we're going to refactor this later but for now what we want to do is to just grab this okay so let's let's grab this let's grab that and then we're going to pass in the pdo connection so let's just say new pdo connection and then pass in the credentials okay so we have our query builder which is supposed to now work as expected we still don't have some some method here working but but what we want to test now will be for the bindings okay so the other tests are still going to fail let's just come he somewhere here and see what we're doing here okay so let's come back here right at the top and then i'm going to say public function test bindings so we're going to get rid of this later but for now let's use this as a way to see if everything works as we are expecting it to so bindings are protected so we need a way to just maybe get them out okay so uh, let's uh, provide a method here temporary method so let's call this, uh, let, let me generate this with PHP Storm. Let's generate a getter for binding and also for place orders, okay? So get bindings, get place orders. And then right here, we are now going to say, let's call this query it's equal to this query builder so for now we can just ignore the the table so let's see where so i'm going to have to annotate this so let's uh query builder query builder so this way php storm will be able to suggest for me okay so we can see where let's just Put some bindings here id command seven and then we keep on chaining say where and then uh, let's say report type port underscore type let's say we want to put uh, a different one here let's just say it's greater than or equal to Okay, so this doesn't make any sense, but it helps our illustration. Let's say uh, 100, okay, in the string. So this is a query, okay, for illustration. And then we can now say query, get bindings, or let's say place orders, okay. And then we can also say query, get bindings okay and actually we can assert that this is actually an array so we can say self assert is array okay so this is an array and we can do the same for bindings But really what I want to show you is what the values look like. So, so we're going to do a var dump of both of them after we assert to see. So let's var dump. Because I want you to see how the content really is. 
and then uh, we're going to do the same for this one okay and let's just uh, exit because we don't want to run the other test and then right here i'm going to dash dash feta query be the test and then we'll specify the directory okay so class config not found uh, that's uh, a little bug because i copied that from a previous class so what we can do is to import this okay so use app config ensure that you're importing that at the top of your class and then we have a query builder we have a pdo connection let's run the test again undefined variable type this is on line 21 okay so line 21 that's outside of the test which is here new pdo all right type is not defined so we're going to say uh, pdo is the type of connection that we're getting okay and then let's run this again So get connection must be an instance of PDO non returned. Return value of PDO get connection must be an instance of PDO non returned. All right, so it means that something still is not work, working the way that we expect. So let's come here to PDO, get connection returns now. All right, so because we didn't call this connect method, okay? So we need to call the connect method. So I'm going to wrap this. So you can pretty much see how this is right now. Okay, so with our test, we're able to immediately track and see where we are not doing things correctly. So we want to be able to connect. Well, better still, it's just better to have this in a separate place altogether. So let's move this out and then call this PDO is equal to this. Okay, and then here we can then say PDO connect. All right, and then we try to run that again. And now we get the data. We have one. And then we have 100, okay? And then for the pl the placeholders, we have ID equals to the question mark. And then we have the report type is greater than or equal to the question mark. So what happens later is that we'll be able to now pass this to uh, PDO or to MySQLi and then substitute the value that we have here for the question mark, which will now be inserted into the database. So with this, we know that our bindings work fine. We can do multiple chaining for where clauses right now. Okay, so we're going to just continue. And as I said previously, we're going to get rid of the of this few tests later and then write proper tests. But for now, it helps us to test part by part of our application.